Yes, I may be slightly obsessed with these pants. Guys, I did a thing. It's so beautiful though. It makes me want to go like this all day. If you guys think it's pretty, give this video a thumbs up, please. Let's try to get this video to 10,000 likes. I have seriously been wanting to buy a tapestry for the background of my videos for such a long time, and I don't know why I never got around to it, but now I have DIY'd one, and it's beautiful, and I love it, and I'm so excited about it. Also, Wreck This Journal has been filmed. It's coming up very soon. If you're not yet part of the family and you want to join to see more of my videos because I post every single week, please click the red subscribe button below and the bell icon so you'll be notified every single time I post. This, unfortunately, is the end of the tie-dye mini-series that was spawned sponsored by Tulip slash I love to create. Thank you so much for sending me a ton of tie dye and encouraging me to do all these projects and share them with my viewers, my so craftastic family. I hope you guys have all enjoyed it. Now let's get on into the tie dyeing. It's a beautiful mandala. To create my tapestry, I am using a queen size sheet that is white and 100% cotton. When I first took it out, the fold lines were insane and it looked like this. But a lot of the initial creases and wrinkles will go away after you wash it and dry it the first time. That's what I was about to do before I was interrupted by my cute orange kitty Leo. You'll see him actually a few times in the video. He likes to interrupt everything that I'm doing and get his nose into my business, you know. And my fiance was actually playing hide and seek with him in the footage here, so that's why he's looking like there's a ghost. No, it's actually just someone hiding behind the couch. <laughs> you don't look at me. I thought it would be fun if you guys want to share your fur baby stories in the comment section below. Let me know a funny thing that they've done, like the funniest thing or maybe the most annoying thing. And I think it'll give everyone in the comment section a smile and a laugh. Here's my sheet fresh out of the dryer and of course it still has a few wrinkles in it. I'm going to take care of some of those by getting the iron out and I'm putting a towel underneath. You could also put a giant blanket to make it easier but I am just ironing in little sections at a time. And of course, if you do have a small child or animal with you, then please be very, very careful that you don't leave the iron unattended and you don't wanna leave it unattended anyway because it's hot and could catch things on fire if it's too close to things. So just don't be careless with the iron if you're using one. But it is actually not necessary because you can make this with a few little wrinkles in it. I finished ironing the whole thing and a lot of those creases are actually just from it not being flat on the ground. It was hard to spread it evenly. I will say that this project is easier if you have two people and I decided to film and create this while I was alone. So I am folding this by myself and it was not very easy. It took me a long time to get the initial fold because there were so many creases in it. But I managed and I got out as many as I could. The first fold is in half as you can see. And the second fold is just going to be in half again to make it into more of a square shape. Not quite because my sheet isn't a square. But anyway, moving on to the next fold. After you get that, you're going to do a diagonal fold to make it a triangle. And since it's not a square, this is what happens. A little bit of fabric will be hanging off the edge there. It's okay. The final fold is in half again diagonally to make it into a smaller triangle. So now it should look like this. It kind of looks like a paper airplane-ish. At this point, you want to draw random lines and circles all over the front portion of this fabric. So just the top layer. And what I'm doing is drawing a couple arches at the bottom. And then I moved on to do some half circles and diagonal lines toward the top. You don't have to do it exactly like mine at all, but here is a close-up of the lines that I drew in case you want to get a similar effect to mine, a similar shaped mandala, I mean. Next, you're going to get some string. I'm actually using dental floss for this part. I thought that you had to use kind of a waxy string and I didn't have any, so I started using this, but then I realized no, for regular tie-dye, I've always just used zip ties and yarn, so 
I moved on to using other strings. Basically, use whatever string you have around or rubber bands. As I was saying, though, you're going to tie along every single line. And the way to get the line straight is to do a little accordion fold or kind of just bunch them together. And when you bunch it, you want the marker to be as straight across as you can when you tie it. And I am using washable marker. You don't want to use a Sharpie on this so it won't, you know, stain at the end. It'll come right off in the wash after you get all your tie dyeing complete. Now I have the first three tied off and I'm going to work on this half circle just to show you guys a little bit more in detail how I go about folding this. It's really easy when you actually sit down to do it. I was really confused trying to learn how to do it and once I sat down and actually had it in front of me, it became a lot easier to get the picture and figure out. When you do get up to the larger sections of fabric that are wider, it is a little bit harder to tie off and this is the part where it's better if you have another person helping you. But if you don't, you probably can make it work just fine because these lines don't have to be tied off perfectly. Even if you don't get completely on the mark, it's still going to be really cool. It just might not be as straight as you want it, but it's still going to be a shape or a line and it'll turn out to be a triangle triangle or a circle in the end so don't worry. After everything is tied off that is when you want to get your tie-dye ready because tie-dye does work the best and it turns out the most vibrant if you use it closest to the time that you mix it. This footage is actually from my kinetic sand tie-dye video that I posted a few weeks back. If you haven't seen that and you're interested, I will link it below, but I am recycling the footage here just because I didn't actually film myself filling up the bottles for this one. After I have it on the rack and I have my floor covered with plastic bags to keep it protected from the dye, I'm taking the dye one color at a time and working on one section at a time. So each little section is going to get its own color. I started with yellow, then the orange, and I moved on to red. I'm like teaching you guys colors in this and you guys already know them. I'm so great at voiceovers. This is just something that I wanted to throw in here. If you have a scrap piece of fabric that matches what you're working on with the actual piece, go ahead and test colors on that, wash it and dry it and see how they turn out because as you will notice at the end, some of the colors did kind of, well, okay. Um, the yellow for me did not turn out at the end. I think it still looked really cool, but the yellow just didn't show up for whatever reason. And you do want to make sure that you're putting on enough dye to get through every single layer of fabric and that you're putting colors next to each other that are gonna bleed and blend to be a pretty color and not a muddy color. So you might not want to put a green next to a purple for instance. I don't know, it might make a weird brownish orange color but it's all up to your experimentation and your preference. So I worked my way along the entire bundled up piece of fabric here and I got to the end and then after I did that final section I wiped off the rack underneath and this is just so when I flip the entire thing over it doesn't get colors in spots where they shouldn't be. So you want to make sure that it's clean before you flip it. And then you can see the underbelly is mostly white so we're going to do the exact same thing and put the colors in the same spots unless you want to do something different. But I am just putting the yellow where the yellow is and filling in all that white area one at a time with each section. And again, you want to make sure that it gets through as many layers of the fabric as possible. So you kind of want to squeeze it a little. And this was my first time doing such a large scale tie dye project. So I did not put enough dye. I thought that I put too much at times and I actually didn't put enough because when I opened it, there were a ton of white spots and I think it did turn out cool that way. But you know, I have a lot to learn in the ways of tie-dye. If you kind of peek inside, you can tell a little bit if there's white, and if I wouldn't have done this, it would have been even more white. So just make sure that you put enough dye. Once you've added all the color that you want, go ahead and grab some plastic to wrap it in. It could be a garbage bag, it could be plastic wrap, 
Ziploc bags if you have ones that are big enough and you're just going to cover the entire thing and let it marinate for a while. I think I let mine sit for 17 or 18 hours and then I took it to the tub because this is such a large project and it would have been hard to rinse off in the sink. Leo, this is ridiculous buddy. <laughs> No. And yeah, Leo's here, my cat again. You really don't want your animals to touch this because they could get dye on their paws and fur and everything. But I was watching him and once I turned the water on in the tub, he kind of ran because he's like, oh no, bath. Just as I was doing while tie-dyeing, I'm wearing gloves again, and this is just gonna keep the dye off of my skin so it doesn't get stained. I am rinsing off each section, and you wanna be careful with lighter colors because the dye from the darker colors could leak down and bleed and blend into your lighter colors. And my yellow completely disappeared, as I was saying earlier. So once it's completely rinsed out and the water runs clear or almost clear, it's time to put it in the washing machine and I just put it on the large load setting and put some detergent in and after it was finished washing, I put it in the dryer and now it is time for the big reveal. I decided to put it on the bed first to show you guys what it would look like as a bed sheet because it is a bed sheet but I do have a king size bed and this is a queen size sheet. It actually doesn't cover all the way down on the sides. I'm so happy with the way that the colors turned out. Of course, it's not as vibrant as it was in the prior clips before rinsing it and everything. That's always going to happen a little bit but there are things you could do like let it sit longer to make the colors more vibrant. And as I said, there are quite a few white spots on this. I still think it looks really, really cool, but if I did do this again, I definitely would try to add more dye in those spots so there would be a little bit less white. But you can see all the shapes, the triangular star points, the circles, everything looks so cool. And I love the way that the colors transition and blend into one another. And I'm also showing you that I have it thumbtacked up in my filming room. And this is normally where the gallery wall is. I have it covered. You can get all the tie-dye you need for these projects and more from tiedyeyoursummer.com. And when you sign up, you'll get 15% off your first order. How exciting. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, please give the video a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. It does really, really help. My videos have been not being recommended lately if you go and check them. Yeah, so I would really appreciate all the help that I can get to uh, have my videos spread around again. I'm going to be posting twice a week, which should help. And I just got off track, but Wreck This Journal is completely filmed and I hope to have it up this Sunday. I'm not gonna promise that it's gonna be up weekly right away, but hopefully like once every other week and then I'll ease my way back into it. But I have tons of videos coming up. You can follow me on social media, by the way, if you wanna see my behind the scenes life. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'll see you very soon, goodbye. I really can't get over how beautiful this is and that I made it.